and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingo. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingo. This week on Fixing South Sudan, the 14th anniversary of Martyrs Day. Remembered, we are featuring voices of widows. What do they think of the day that has killed their husbands? What is the significance, the importance, and we look ahead. We are happy to welcome them to Fixing South Sudan. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Same to you. Welcome you. to the show. Can you start by introducing yourself and then your colleague will come in. Okay. My name is Maria Gideon. I'm Deputy Director for War Widows for the Commission of War Disabled Widows and Orphans. And your name? My name is Rebecca Anyang Chol. I'm a widow. We are happy to welcome you here and to talk about uh, something important without uh, your husbands who died, the children who died, your colleagues who died, we would not have the Republic of South Sudan. So on this occasion, what would you say about such kind of a day? What is the importance? Yes, the importance of the day, it is the day our late leader, Dr. John Garang, crashed uh, by helicopter. That is why the government of South Sudan formed the commission and then made the day to be for the martyrs of South Sudan who sacrificed their blood to have this country. That is the day, 14th anniversary, we used to celebrate all the years. That is why we are here for 14th anniversary today. And uh, speaking about the death of Dr. John, it was uh, quite tragic. This is someone who led the movement in the bush for 21 years. It was very painful. On that day, when Dr. John Goring crashed and died, where were you and what are your memories about the day? You see, it was really a darkness day. It was very painful for all of us, we South Sudanese people. I was in Rumbek. And you know, Rumbek, it was the, the heart of South Sudan. And we were there together with our late Dr. John Garam. When he crashed, it was really very painful to the people of the late state as well as uh, the people of South Sudan. It was really very painful. What was the reaction of people around you? Were they mourning? Were they crying? Were they wailing? What, what could you remember? You see, when uh, we had the news, it was really very bad. People were crying, they were blaming themselves why we left our Dr. John to go to Kampala. It was really very bad to the people. All people, even the village, even the children, they were crying. Because our late leader, he was a good man. Uh, when they heard about the death of Dr. John, people didn't open the shop. Even we didn't eat during that days until our government went to the radio, talked to the people. Let us open the shop, those of them we did, General them we did, and the rest. We had to open the shop to let people eat because death and food is the same. Mm. But it was really difficult. People didn't eat for those days. What were people saying? They were saying that it was killed by those who were fighting with us, the that Janaba. Is. Even the small children, they are saying, oh, they kill our leader now, those of Janaba, those of northern Sudan. 
So as you correctly said, it's called Martyrs Day. There were many, and on top of whom is the leader of yes. the movement, Dr. John Garang de Mabio. Yes. And then we are going to talk shortly about your uh, commission and your specific role, but you are a widow. What is your story? Yeah, my story is really very long and really very painful for me. Yeah, when I was married in 1982, my husband and the rest, they went to Khartoum, we went to Khartoum with, with the hand together, and they gathered to think for the liberation. You see, when they went to the liberation, I was remain in the village. After that, I went to, to him. It was not easy. Yeah, I need to stay without a man, but we managed it. My husband told me, I'm the politician. We are going to liberate the country. Even if I die and you remain, you will remain in the peaceful country. But it was really very painful when I heard about his death, it was paying me. He was yeah. part of the movement? Yeah, he was part of the movement. What can you say a bit about his role that he played? Yeah, uh, during that time he was journalist. He was calling people to join the movement in many languages because he knew many languages. Radio as well. Yeah, radio as well um, during that time with uh, those of uh, Rebecca Joshua, also with um, Tim Yaga uh, Tim and Chao Mayag Duke and uh, Marhum Dutkai. Yes. Yeah, they were there. Yeah, yeah. I knew them all. <laughs> yeah. And uh, welcome to the program. Uh, what do you think about the day? It's called Martyrs Day. Why is it important? Yeah, thank you very much. The day is very important because today we have our country. That's why it is important. They died and our leader died and at least we have a country. It is very important that we call it home and our people can have a country that is in the world. And what, what would you say about uh, your own specific story as a widow? It must be a painful story. It is very painful to lose a husband. It is very painful to lose a child. But at least we are surviving and we can uh, go back to saying that our, their blood is not in vain. It is very painful when you don't have a husband in the world. You are a young person, your husband died, but you made it. It is good. Uh, tell me a bit about your husband, the specific role that he played in the struggle. My husband played a great role in the struggle. He worked with the organization. He was not a freedom fighter, but he came through the war. He brought so many organizations. He came with the, how to deliver food and security how to do a lot of things. He contribute a lot to this war. Humanitarian work. Humanitarian during work. During the liberated areas. During the war. Mm. During the war in South Sea. Uh, he brought a lot of things, a lot of ideas to the UN people, how to help people here. He's the one who invented it with the, with the organization of humanitarians. And what, what are your thoughts about that day when we lost our leader, Dr. John Garing? Where it, were you and what were your memories? I was abroad that day. I was abroad. I was not in the country. And it was very bad when we had it. It is a crushing moment for everybody, including the children. It was on in the night and it looked like a dream. In the TVs in Al Jazeera, it was coming like the plane is missing, the plane is missing. But in the end, it came to reality around five in the evening and it was a very crushing moment. Mm -hmm. Our community came together, we stayed for days. Nobody can talk, we blame the Arabs like we said. We blame the Sudan, we said it's the one who killed. We couldn't believe that it's a crush. Mm -hmm. Until today we still don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, we are going to come back to your linkage. Uh, with the commission and maybe let's hear a little bit about uh, the war widows uh, is a branch of the wounded heroes commission and what can you say what 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 is the specific vision and the whole idea is to take care of the widows how do you do that 
Yes, our vision is this, uh, we want our widows not to be reliant to anybody. We want to support them to be self-reliant to themselves, not to beg on the street. We want them to take care of the young one, to send them to school. Also, we want them to, to support themselves. Yeah. And how do you do that? Do you have all the resources you need? Do you have some resources? What is the design around that? You see, before this uh, current war, uh, the, the government formed the commission in uh, 2006, and then support the commission with uh, some package to support the widows with it. Uh, like uh, those of uh, Rakshad, we have the book here. We have like this Raksha, we support those widows with the aid, with the income generating activities. Because if we give them money, they will not go and use this money without giving them training. We used to train them first, we, we used to, to collect the data after that, and then we give them the capacity building for income generating activities. Because if you give the money to someone, cannot go and survive with it. If you give him something to do, like uh, Chinese says, if you want to support, to give a fish, please train how to catch the fish. That is what we are doing, we commissioned. Since 2006, we gave them a lot of training for a tailoring machine. They used to make uh, the, 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 the saw the clothes for selling like a uniform for a student. Also, we get them tuk-tuk to take things to the market. They get money for it. Also, we support them with the agriculture tool, you see, for, the, for that time. But when the war broke, it was destroyed by war. Up to now, some widows, they die. Some orphans, even they die. They don't have anything to support themselves until today. The immediate question that people ask is, who is a widow? Because if you have to aggregate or put together all the widows in this country, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So how do you decide who is a widow? And even if thousands of them qualify, mm -hmm. how do you do a short list and things like that? Yeah, the widow we have here in the commission is the war widow. The family is martyrs. The one, the husband is a Which soldier. Which war? The, the 21 the, years the, war? The, the Anyanya one war, the 21 war, oh. the 1991, like when we fought with the Riyadh is also included. That's part of the 21 yeah, years war. Yeah, 21 years. Even the Juba Masaga, oh. yeah, we include it in. From Anyanya one to 21 years, mm -hmm. yeah, is the, the, the widow, war widow. And a mother who's losing a uh, husband during the war after independence, is it also uh, included or you have made your cut off? You see, during that time when we collect the data, it was not accurate. Okay. From Anyanya 1 up to 21 years, it was not accurate because uh, the fund, the, the, the commission doesn't have the fund to fulfill the, the, the collection of the data. But we collect some data, you see, and then we used to go and, and uh, write that data to make the survey for the widows because of uh, planning for training, for income generating activities. But now we lost all right. the data mm -hmm. because we didn't collect all the data. Right. But now we are still looking for peace. If peace come, we will go back again to see who is alive and who is not alive to collect that again. And let me hear from you, uh, how do you benefit from the commission? Uh, what has it done for you? How has it changed your life? Yeah, the commission did a lot. The commission, like she said, is uh, when, uh, when we first came, uh, it used to give like a uh, sewing machine, an uh, umbrella with uh, tea cups and tea things for for the widows to make business and generate activities. And they did a program in 10 states. They built houses, the commission. 
10 houses in each state. So this is a benefit for the widows and the orphans. So this commission people benefit from. And what about you in particular? Me? I did not benefit a lot from commission because I was doing my job. I work and I support because these people, we see the vulnerable, mm. the very vulnerable, but I'm better off. Mm. So we give it to the very, very vulnerable people. This is the people that has been supported. But me, I support it because I'm a widow and I know how hard it is when you don't have food in the table for your child. Mm. And this commission was doing it. Like, and when the war again erupted in 2013, it, it destroyed everything. Even the little that the commission used to get and have is not there anymore. Mm. If you see the widows in the office, you will feel bad. But I support mm. the commission. How would do you support. want the government or any other agencies to support the commission? We really want the, the government and the other agency to look into this. Because if this commission is stable and is stabilized, it will help a lot of widows. Because now we have more orphans, we have more widows. And we need to collect their data. And by helping them, there is a bill, Matai's bill that has been passed through the parliament. It's been given to the parliament, but it is not passed. If that bill is passed, Maybe that bill will help a lot because a lot of ministries and a lot of other things can help the Matai's family. Mm -hmm. It's not the government alone. It is the whole government. And Rebecca is raising an issue of Matai's family. So it's not just the widow, but also the children. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do, you, how do you cope with that? We know that uh, you want uh, uh, enterprises owned by women by widows to be supported so that they are self-reliant. What about the children? What about the education? What about the basics? That is why the commission came up with the planning of a matter bill, family bill. This matter is family bill. If the government support the matter is family bill, it will support them a lot. Because uh, the package will be put in that bill it will support the widow with the family. You see, even the, the, the matter's family will, will benefit from that one. And then we, we took it to the parliament, even we took it to the Ministry of Justice to be support. And then the, the, the parliament told us to take it to the public hearing. And then we hear it twice for public uh, hearing. But up to now, we don't have any result. But that one, if the government put it as a, it is called a Damakashihada, in, in Khartoum, even in Uganda, even in Kenya, it is there. The benefit of the, the, the beneficiaries of war, like family matters, they can benefit from that deal. That is what we are saying, if the government uh, focus for the family matters bill, it will support the family of matters really. And uh, when we come back to the independent South Sudan, uh, that was why uh, many of your husbands died, your children, our mothers, and all the people who perish in the war. Uh, so coming back to the independence, what are your feelings about that independence? Yes, you have a lot of challenges. Uh, you have a country, but at the same time, there are a lot of challenges. What would you say? How can we benefit from independence? You see, if there is uh, independence, you see, people of South Sudan will uh, have uh, uh, many plans, uh, like school will be there, even their health will be improved. Even the water, we don't have water up to now. We use water of rain water is, benefit, is better than those of tanker. You see, we will have the water, we will have many things, you see. Even freedom of, of uh, work, you can move from here up to the village to bring your food. But now, that is why we hope for the for the uh, for, 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 for safety of the country. Uh, peace. Yeah. Yeah, peace. Peace, yeah. To be. let peace come to the country. Because peace is not anywhere. It is with us. It is in our, if the, our people of South Sudan put the peace in their heart, 
this country will give a lot of things because we are very rich country is very rich but if we don't want to bring peace you see we will not get anything but we hope to let this peace agreement to be implemented by all of us it is not for the government it is not for the io even to the partners who are uh, making this uh, agreement it is for all of us and we are benefiting from this country what do you think we should do to make sure that uh, the peace agreement get signed and also that peace the spirit of peace take hold in the country because it, it must be shameful that South Sudanese after getting their country they are still fighting among themselves yes we want a ceasefire to be implemented because if we don't want to silence the gun we will not achieve the peace because some people now they didn't sign like Thomas Shirilo now is still out of the agreement we need them to implement this uh, agreement so that to let our people be in peaceful country to let this stop this killing because they increase the number of widows now even the number of orphan even the number of disabled you see they are increased the number even us in the commission we are confused huh? we have matters of the khartoum they are here with us we have this new matters or the disabled or orphan you see, it is really very bad. We need this, uh, uh, this ceasefire to be implemented. Because if the gun is silent now, people will be in peaceful country and then they will implement the peace agreement. And Mama Rebecca, independence actually means dignity. This was the time people expect that they will be smiling forever afterward. But then two years later, we know what happened, 2013 war broke out, there's a lot of misery, thousands, but according to NGOs, millions of people displaced, uh, thousands internally, others outside the borders, and South Sudanese are still on the run. So how do we make sure that we have that stability so that people can enjoy being in their own country? The stability will get through the peace. Our leaders have to look into it that the people are suffering. Our people are scattered, people are dying, people are not in the country. So we really need this peace to come together. They should see to it that we don't want any more people dying. No orphan, no disabled and no widows. And come to the country and we lead our own self. Because they, did, they started very well when we were started our independence too years before the war, it was rapidly coming up. So we really need our country. We need our peace, we need our leaders to come together and see to it that nobody else died in this country. What makes you believe that uh, your husband did not die in vain and some of your relatives did not die in vain? What, what, what gives you that hope and that motivation? Or do you say, given the things that are happening, you are ashamed about the country we have because of uh, the challenges we are facing. We have hope because we have a country. We are people and we know what is good for us. That gives me hope that I didn't lose my husband for nothing. My sisters, my, uh, the children, didn't lose their father for nothing. Yet we are ashamed that we have our beautiful country and we ruin it ourselves. It's a shame on us. Really, this is the first world now that we see other people are doing better in their country. We can do better in our country. We can do the best we can for our people. And what would that be the best? Give me your dream. I know during the liberation days, there was a, a famous uh, song about an SPLA wife. When the country is finally liberated, the SPLA wife will own an apartment, will drive a yeah. car, and go mm -hmm. to the market, and this picture was painted. Is that what you are getting, or, or that is still the dream that you would like to see? We didn't get it yet. Maybe some other people got it. Little bit of people, they got it, but a lot did not get it. And we need to get it all. We need to get that apartment, we need to get that beautiful dress, drive a car, have a good meal and be there with your children, safe and sound. Mm. And the peace country. is one way of 
It's the only the peace. Yeah. It's only the peace. And what about the prosperity aspect of it? Because what, what will make you proud in your commission? What, what is that thing when you have achieved it, you feel that uh, you are successful as a person and also proud of your achievement? You see, what will make me to be proud, it is the time when I saw those orphans having the good education. Also, they are a good people who are handling the offices. Even the widows, they are managed to, to save themselves. It, it will give me hope that uh, even the number of widows not to be increased again, to let uh, this uh, war stop. And then I will see the, the movement of people without any fear, you see. Because people are fearing now. If you see people are moving without fear, and then to implement the song you are saying, you see, during that time when we, our husband uh, sing that song, we were proud because if we achieve the country, we will have an apartment like this, we will go with the car, we will have a lot of things. But when the war broke again, the current war, it gave us the hopeless. But when we will hope, it is the time we implement the peace and prosperity in the country. Now, uh, there is education that is needed uh, about uh, the memory of the martyrs because not everyone knows the sacrifices that led to the liberation of South Sudan. And as a widow and as a commission, what, what do you think is the best way of remembering those who died, Dr. John Gering and all the heroes who passed away, the high command, and and even the unknown officer, not just officer, but a foot soldier who died for this country. And you know, around Martyr's Day, there's always those monsoon rains, those mm -hmm. big rains. Mm -hmm. It rained on those people on the way uh, towards uh, liberating the country. So many people uh, who died for this country, many people don't remember about, they don't even know the whereabouts of their families. Some, they died without having uh, wives. The sacrifices were immense, but there's always a tendency to forget, to forget about what it took to have a country like South Sudan. So what, do you, what, what is that uh, remembrance, befitting remembrance, that you think we should do in South Sudan so that you feel that there is dignity? The people who died are remembered. Yeah, in the country, what we want, we want our people to write the history, the history of South Sudan. Because it was for so long time ago, from Nyanyawan up to the 21 years, we need history to be wrote. It is one. Number two, we want them to be remind with the giving name to schools, also to the road, also to the clinic. You see, to let us remember our heroes, what they did. You see, we have many uh, heroes, but we can remember them if we name them. You see, children will come, the generation will come and get the history alive, and then we, they will see the road. It is road of Dr. John Garang, like uh, Dr. John Garang uh, University. Even here, the, his name, even those of Nguyen uh, Bain, it has been given whole in the J1. You see that one, it will make moral for the families of the martyrs. They will be happy and they will say that our husband didn't die in vain. But if nothing like that, history will not tell what was happened for the, those days. Yeah, and uh, why don't we stop here? Uh, and I thank you for your time, for coming on Fixing South Sudan, Maria Gideon, Gakumar, the Deputy Director, War Widows, and Rebecca Anyang Chol, who is a widow. Uh, thank you for coming to this program. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.